Hello everyone, I'm Professor Geek. Welcome back to the channel. Before this Kenobi series came out, you'd hear a lot of people say on Twitter or in, in, in YouTube videos and channels, um, comment sections, blogs, whatever. They would say, I love Obi-Wan Kenobi. Kenobi's character has always been my favorite. He's always, he's, he's my favorite, this, this, and that. Can't wait. They better not mess this up. I can't wait to hear these stories. And I would ask sometimes these people, well, hey, I mean, did you ever read the EU's, you know, installment of these stories? Uh, no, no, I just, uh, no, no, but I just, you know, he's my favorite. If he was really your favorite character, if you were really so craving after a good story, then you would have already read an amazing, absolutely amazing story that the EU has to offer, and that is Kenobi by John Jackson Miller. Now, I know many of my audience already knows about this. In fact, if you follow my channel for any amount of time, which is what I'm doing this video for tonight, we did a book study, beginning to end, a wonderful book study, uh, or a book study of this wonderful book. It's by John Jackson Miller, who is uh, easily my one of my favorite authors from the EU. He did cross over into writing for the Disney continuity stuff. Yeah, can't begrudge a guy wanting a dollar, but I'm certainly not interested in reading of that. But he's really, I mean, he's just a quality writer. He did uh, the Knights of the Old Republic comics. Um, he did the uh, Knight Errant novels and comics. He did the, the Kenobi. Now, this is just one novel, right? So we do know that Kenobi spent many, many years there on Tatooine, guarding and watching over Luke. There are some other stories here and there in the EU that tell a little story here and there, you know, whatever this continuity, but we don't really get, it's true, the, the full story from uh, from the moment he, he sets foot on, on Tatooine to the moment he meets Luke in A New Hope. But this does, this story does pick up with him bringing infant Luke to Tatooine and looking for the Lars family. It's... I'm trying to, I don't want to just sound like I'm gushing. It's It's, you know, I'm a writer. And I, and I appreciate good story. And there are some books that you read. You know, there might be some books in the Star Wars EU that I read that I think, oh, it was fun. It was fun. I got, you know, it was true to the original spirit of the, of the original trilogy. It was fun. But it wasn't really an artistic piece of, you know, work. There are a lot of novels, you know, some novels in the EU like that. This one's not one of them. This one is a true artistic novel. It's very well crafted. It's 100% true to Kenobi. We're absolutely true to his character. It um, tells the story, as I said, of him coming to Tatooine with the infant Luke. And then he has to figure out, how does it look? How's it going to look? Now, I know that I'm here to watch over him, but what does that look like? Am I Uncle Ben next door? No. Well, how far do I need to live away from them? But I need to live close enough to still keep an eye on them. What is the level of of threats that would come to Tatooine? You know, with this new uh, nonsense Disney series has brought all kinds of ridiculous continuity breaking ideas and 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 silliness to the the Tatooine planet there. But it's reasonable to think, and that's ridiculous, right? But it is reasonable to 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 assume that it wouldn't just be a quiet, never a threat upbringing either. I mean, Tatooine isn't exactly the safest little planet in the world. It's rough, you know, with the the um, Mos Eisley and so forth. This is a story that is completely set on Tatooine, and it's a Star Wars novel, but other than that, it's more like reading a Western, because it's completely set on the story, on the uh, planet of Tatooine. You're there in the desert sands, you've got farmers, you know, with the Dubex and, and the, uh, the Opies, they're, they're moisture farmers, you know? It's, it's very much like reading a, a, a Western or a prairie. It's, it's got a, a element of a romance story to it as well, because Obi-Wan does... Uh, meet this this woman who's a widow cantina owner there and uh you know there's there's it would be romance on her part you know and stuff like that and i'm not spoiling anything i'm just you know uh telling you what's going on here there's a small town there's politics in the little small town there on tatooine uh there's all this stuff going on it's not a novel about him watching over luke like i said it does start with him dropping off luke and it's a novel about him trying to figure out what is my place what should i do here while I'm watching out for Luke and you know, how do I watch out for Luke and all that, like I said, but it's true to the episode three that already set that up. You know, Kenobi didn't go to Tatooine to serve out his man penance and be a broken, you know, not even a trained Jedi anymore. And oh, I'm so sad. I know what I do. I need women to come into my life and tell me, you know, it's not the Disney crap. This is Kenobi being true to his mission 
which we saw at the end of episode three. He's going there to watch over Luke and commune with Qui-Gon Jinn. Remember, Yoda tells him, I've been contacted in the Force by the Force Ghost of Qui-Gon Jinn. I'll, I'll teach you how to do this. So that's what Kenobi's there doing, because, of course, Qui-Gon was the one who, who first believed Anakin was the chosen one and so forth. And it makes perfect sense for Obi-Wan to spend his time there in communion, meditation and communion with Qui-Gon's Force Ghost and, and preparing him for his mentorship of Luke, who would go on, of course, to, to fulfill uh, Anakin's chosen one, you know, uh, status there. I'm trying to think of what else to say that doesn't spoil it. He also has to decide, okay, what's the balance between my long goal, my long form goal to watch out for Luke to, to guide the chosen one, you know, the one who will fulfill that chosen one status where Anakin failed. So that's his, his main purpose there, but he's still a Jedi. Is he supposed to, you know, he's supposed to be in hiding, but is he supposed to just ignore injustices or ignore people suffering around him? Well, that's, that's counter to his philosophy as well. He does have to deal a little bit with the loss of Anakin, the loss of the whole Jedi order. It does talk about how, you know, at one point he's saying, you know, pretty much lost my family. Uh, I'm not a family man. You know, Jedis didn't get married and everything, but he said, I, you know, I had brothers. I had, you know, even a strange little green uncle, you know, Yoda, and, and he, and he lost his family and he's got to deal with that, you know, and that's, that's fine. That's fine. But he never ceases to be the true blue aspirational hero of Obi-Wan Kenobi that we know him to be. They don't have to rip him down and, and you know, he doesn't have to be, oh, I'm broken. I'm a broken man. That's ridiculous. Oh, that grated on me so much when I heard Disney was going that route. This shows you, you don't have to do that. You tell a wonderful story. He's got to figure things out. How do I, how do I operate now? How do I, you know, consist of these things? It's just a wonderful read. If you are at all interested in the character of Obi-Wan Kenobi, if you understand the nonsense of what Disney's doing with him, then you owe it to, to yourself to read this and to, to just mention it to others, to get this story out there, that there's actually really good stories available for what Kenobi did on Tatooine as he's watching over Luke. This is uh, available. It's... um. I have a hardcover here, the pre-Legends Banner hardcover. It has been re-released in the Legends Banner. You can buy it in paperback uh, that way, but it's also an Audible book for those who like to listen to Audible, uh, like me many times. It's read wonderfully by, um, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the man who reads it on Audible, but he does a great, does a great Obi-Wan Kenobi. Uh, really sounds like uh, Ewan McGregor in that, and does some other voices very well. He's read a bunch of the EU books. I just wish I could remember. Mayberry. Is it Jonathan Mayberry? Or am I thinking of uh, somebody else? Anyway, <laughs> might have gotten that wrong. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below. And if you, as I've said before, if you go to audibletrial.com slash Professor Geek, you can get a free month, a free audio book to listen to for your free trial month. Uh, cancel anytime, you know, and, and, and don't get charged or stick around. They do have really good productions. And as I said, Disney's starting to put out more of these unabridged versions of previous EU books that were only available in the abridged versions. So it's good. And it's also not just somebody quietly reading. They do the voices. They've got the the music, the John Williams score coming in. They've got the sound effects. It's quite good. Uh, as I tell my students, and I've mentioned in previous videos, there's no shame in, in listening to an audio book if you just don't have the time in your schedule right now to read. It's always wonderful to sit down and read. And we should be cultivating the discipline of being able to sit quietly, hear these voices in our head, populate it, cast it as we go along. That's something that shouldn't be lost. But in our daily schedules, it's just not something you can do all the time that frequently, especially if it's a book like this you want to read soon, and you know, I can't sit down and quietly read a book until three months from now or whatever. Grab the Audible and, and listen to it on your commutes and stuff like that. It's wonderful. So uh, I'll put links for the hard copy as well as the Audible down below. But what I'm also going to do is link in the top here somewhere and in below in the description a link to a playlist that we, as I said, Big Al and I went through chapter by chapter and did a book review of this stellar work. And, and we do kind of sum it up. So I wouldn't listen to our book review until you'd actually listen to the book yourself or read the book yourself first, because it's a study. It's not a, it's not a, um, a tease, you know, it's a study. So we are spoiling things and we are talking about how the, the narrative knits together and everything. And it's, it's really well, well done. So I recommend that, uh, especially now when people are, are opening their eyes and realizing, this Kenobi series horrible. That's not what Kenobi would do. That's not the Star Wars content. What, what is this nonsense? And and Disney's busy telling you that you're a horrible racist person for, for daring to, to think that. Uh, you have this wonderful outlet, this wonderful story that's already been told that they can't take away. So do check that out, please, if you haven't already. You owe it to yourself. Like I said, if you're at all interested in the character of Kenobi, because he's a wonderful character, truly a wonderful aspirational uh, Jedi character. Uh, you know, we've, we've received just wonderful wonderful portrayals of him in uh, in books and film so 
do recommend that. I'll be back, of course, uh, Tuesday night. We're going to continue with our Shatterpoint book study, starting it actually this Tuesday, and I'll continue with our EU studies, continue to put those stories out there, and and, and, uh, and I'll be continuing my reviews of them as well. Up next will be the Knights of the Old Republic comic reviews by John Jackson Miller. So lots to come there, as well as more analyses, commentaries on, on uh, mythology and culture, popular culture, stories, comics, movies, and whatnot. But until next time, keep enjoying and digging deeper into the stories you love. Thanks for watching.